item of the agenda take place so they can go home. Okay, um, discussion and possible action on submitting a resolution slash letter of support for Baldwin Hills Elementary School seeking to declare Baldwin Hills Elementary School a charter free zone. Okay. chaos on the public comment side if you just up that opening presentation time for five minutes. There's just no way. We have to go and watch the table. We have to do uh, time, time to train for a while. Yeah, I don't know if we can do that. Can you do eight minutes? Can you do eight minutes? Oh, well, that's what happened. Give the board credit. And I will reiterate that um, there's actually no, not much of a need for everyone to get up and say the same thing. Um, okay, here we go. Right. Thank you, council members. My name is Delmar Thomas. I'm a parent representative at Baldwin Hills Elementary, the entire left side of the room. Uh, I have a child at Baldwin Hills. I'm also a member of the Charter Co-location Committee. We're here before you today because our school is essentially at a do or die position. We've watched our school slowly, slowly die. We've lost computer rooms, art rooms, after school programs and help with tutoring and the list can go on and on as a result of a charter location, co-location by New LA Charter School. We, put, we sent to you a, a written document that I think sums up a lot, so I won't talk about that piece, but I'll just sort of give you a roadmap of some of the people that will be here with our presentation. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to let you all know you have full authority under neighborhood council rules to pass a resolution to declare a school charter free. It's been done before. I have a copy of Pacoima Neighborhood Council, similar resolution for anyone who wants to know. So if anyone tells you this can't be done or if an LA USD rep says you're going to violate the law, please know that that's not true. You have the power to make an advisory opinion or letter of support based on your own feelings and understandings going on within your community. The second thing I want to let you know is um, Again, this is a resolution that must be decided today. The district has deadlines and decisions that are weeks away. We cannot wait till next week's meeting or our school may very well be gone or significant additional space may be gone. The charter school will get up and tell you, we're doing the best we can. We promise we won't take more. That never ends up happening. That hasn't happened in the last three years. They'll change their mind, the district will change their mind and we'll show up in August and realize we've lost more classrooms unless you today decide to stand up uh, and support Baldwin Hills, which has been in your community for since 1941. So with that being said, I'm gonna turn over to our first presenter, uh, Dr. Davis, our school principal. She's gonna give you some, some insights on exactly what's going on in our school. And she's gonna clarify some of the, uh, what I would call misrepresentation by what the charter has been presented to you. Thank you. All right, good evening, council members, and thank you for taking the time to hear us today. Um, just briefly, because I know time is limited. Um, in spring of 2015, our school was granted uh, autonomy to be a pilot school. 
district vetted, board approved, and our school has been in the community again 75 years, one that's been a gem um, in serving the needs of our community and has had amazing successes in so doing. Um, with us being a pilot school, we have certain autonomies with curriculum and instruction. We focus on culturally responsive teaching, STEAM, and project and problem-based learning. That happened again in spring of 2015. Spring of 2016, we were told that we were forced to co-locate with New LA Elementary School. So in the first round of them coming, that meant we had to move teachers out of their classrooms. That meant that our engineering, our space for yoga, our space for chess were taken. A year later in 2017, our book room was taken, which now we have an unlit, unventilated storage container on our parking lot where we're supposed to pull curricular materials from. A year later, spring 2018, we then were forced to give up another set of rooms. Our one room, a parent run after school program where we also did counseling, also did reading intervention. Our room for visual arts, also a space where our, our tenants are able to meet the needs of our special ed students, occupational therapists, speech therapists, etc. That was taken. Over the course of our time as a pilot school, our achievement has continued to grow. Every year we have risen in our test scores. We have multiple excelling magnet awards. Our test scores outpace our neighbors, outpace the district, outpace the state when meeting the needs of the Our enrollment has also continued to increase, and due to the fact that the co-located charters on our campus, we had to get rid of our computer lab so that we could meet the needs of our own lab. Now moving into spring 2019, they're saying they're not taking any more space, yet they're still bringing on more students. We now don't have room to accept students that are on our magnet waiting list. We have students that we're going to have to turn away because we don't have room on our campus. This is egregious, this is unacceptable, this is unjust, and enough is enough. <laughs> our school community has been advocating since New LA has been on our campus to fight for our space both with community organizations, our board member, Local District West. We've submitted a petition with over 10,000 signatures to the district itself. Thank you. Um, and this is just another means of seeking support and advocacy for us so that we can maintain and preserve what falls and what is a place where our students, a coveted place where our students are able to excel and thrive. Thank you for hearing us. teacher at Baldwin Hills Elementary and I'm also a uh, homeowner and resident at Village Green. I spend my whole life 24 hours in the 5400 block of Obama Boulevard. Yeah. I am here to tell our story. No representatives from the district, no Prop 39 paper circulating around this room tells the story of my work conditions and my students' learning conditions. I tell that story. That is my story. <laughs> Under our pilot school status, we have extra autonomies, and along with that come extra accountabilities. Annually, Baldwin sends out principal evaluation and pilot review surveys to all stakeholder groups. Families are our largest stakeholder group. Last year, 150 families participated and their responses indicated an overwhelming concern regarding the charter school's presence on our campus. Parents highlighted safety as a number one concern and the lack of security at the back gate that the charter uses. We as a school are responding to the concerns of our families that they have emphasized. Families want a change now. They wanted it last year, the year before that, and the year before that. In addition, enrichments are written into our pilot school plan. Enrichments might sound, okay. <laughs> um, our enrichment programs are doing a double job for our students. Chess, yoga, engineering, robotics, many of our 
students in our communities cannot afford, their parents cannot afford to take them to these enrichment services on the weekends and after school. We at Baldwin Hills provide these enrichments during the school day out of our school budget. And our students are being pushed into the far corners of our classrooms and our enrichment spaces. And this is unacceptable and it can't go on another day. Thank you. Can I have one comment as a parent? We're going to do public comments after we hear the next slide. Hi, good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Kate O'Brien. I'm the principal at ULA Charter. Um, I just first want to say thank you for inviting us here and letting us tell our part of the story as well. Um, I submitted to the council a document, um, just a response to the resolution, and I feel like we have come out today because we want to advocate for our school as an asset of the community as well. Um, there are representatives here from Prop 39 who I think can speak to how this process works, so I'm not going to do that at this time. Um, I do want to talk about what New LA is bringing to the community. We are also here because parents have advocated for this um, school in the community. We have plenty of parents who are here to speak on why they want us here. Um, and it's important to note that they are a part of this neighborhood um, and are constituents of this neighborhood council. Um, there are a, some specific concerns that were raised that I'd like to address. And so, um, with regard to the space that has been taken, one thing that I want to point out is that we were initially offered in 2016 when our school opened, uh, eight classrooms. New LA recognizing that eight classrooms um, at any time is, is a lot. We tried to look at the situation critically and we noticed that the Delta Center for Education, uh, for Professional Development rather, is on that campus and was not counted in the classroom count. There were three classroom spaces there and we negotiated with LAUSD to please take that space um, in order to minimize the impact. So we got those three classrooms and then the five. Um, in the three years and since, we are now at this point using those eight classrooms that were initially offered in 2016. Um, we have not asked for any additional space next year. Um, that is not a lie. We have been upfront from the very beginning about our growth um, and have not changed it over the summer. That has never been the case. Um, this year we are remaining, we are adding students, and we are doing it with the existing classroom space that we have. Um, I understand the concerns about campus security. We take security very seriously. In the document I gave to you, I outlined the extensive procedures that we use to monitor security, and I think some of the parents here can speak to that as well. Um, we do not leave the gate open at any time. We do not um, allow people on the campus who are not known to us. We have a system for identifying new LA families who can access the campus, um, and that door is controlled by a buzzer with a intercom and a video monitor. Um, <coughs> we don't use the monitor. Uh, so my staff and all of the LA, New LA staff uses the monitor. So the only people we allow onto campus are people who are known to us. So if anybody is allowing additional people on, that is not happening by the charter school. Um, uh, we, I am going to invite up um, some other members of our community, but I do want to stress again that we are the community. And so when we think about what are the assets and what are the gems in this community, I would advocate that New LA is one of them. I harbor no ill will toward Baldwin Hills and the school. I am impressed um, of what they are doing. I think they're doing fantastic work. Um, and the bottom line is, we are not looking for this to be a permanent situation. There is no takeover happening um, of the Baldwin Hills Elementary School. We are wanting to serve our parents in this community and our students 
Um, and we have made every effort to do that together with the Baldwin Hills community, um, the Baldwin Hills school community, uh, in order to try and work together. Our ultimate goal is to have our own site, and so I would appeal to you guys, the Neighborhood Council, um, to help us find a location within our neighborhood community where our parents and students live, um, where we don't have to share and we don't have to impact other people in the way that we um, apparently are. And so, um, again, I appeal to you to help us work together and to share in the best possible way um, and to try and help us find that site. Um, and I'm gonna bring up Brooke Rios, um, who's going to also speak. I'd like also to submit, um, I just have an, an additional document where I wanted to point out some specific things in the resolution that were proposed that are um, inaccurate. So I'm going to give this to the council. certainly like to uh, Good evening, I'm Brooke Rios. I'm the Executive Director of New Los Angeles Charter Schools. I want to express gratitude to the West Adams Neighborhood Council for inviting us here to have a seat at the table tonight. New LA is prepared to listen, empathize, and work together as fellow educators to continue to look for solutions. As the result of tonight's discussion, I hope it will become clear that we have not, nor do we intend to take anything away from the Baldwin Hills community. However, our intentions do not compensate for the impact of our co-location, and we are sympathetic to those concerns. I lead an organization that serves a population of students who look very different than I do. 98% of the students who attend ULA are students of color. 91% qualify for free and reduced lunch. 61% come from this community because their parents chose our free public school as an option. The plan for our school is to find and occupy our own independent site, which we are actively pursuing. Each year, we have considered alternatives to our co-location. We've explored Dorsey High School. This year, we even explored an option in another board district. This option was unacceptable for our families given the distance and existing challenges with transportation that many face. I was told that there are no other single site options in this board district, and we do not have the resources to split campuses at this time. <coughs> Due to the lack of realistic options, we entered into an agreement with LAUSD to stay at Baldwin Hills for the 1920 school year and not take any additional space. Clearly, both schools are powerless in this situation, and I wonder how we can move beyond these challenges together. I'm hopeful that the Neighborhood Council can help us to explore solutions tonight. Okay, for the sake of time, how many people would like to make a comment on both sides? How many people on the Baldwin Hill School side? So about Five people, five people. No, no, no. Maybe ten. Okay, so, okay, so, and how many on the, the charter school side? Okay, so a few. Okay, so, um, we're going to give you about a minute each. We cannot accommodate everyone. So, uh, if, if there's comments or questions from the board, uh, we are allowed. We are, we are allowed to uh, say something. Okay. Oh, certainly. certainly. Okay. Um, hello, hello. If I could have your attention, yes, LAUSD is present. Um, and, you're right. right. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Scaff. Okay. So. Yeah. We would like. Can we hear from you? Sure. Comment on this. Would you like us to ask you to take the public comment? Because we're not free to decide. We're not just wanting. Oh yeah. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Can we? I would like you to process that. Okay. Would you like you want your community folks? Could you have so many on your side? If you want to come in afterwards, in case there's comments or questions, that we can clarify to the Okay. All right. Okay. So, and we have the first uh, person on this side here. 
Okay, my name is Dante Taylor. I ran the after school program at Baldwin. The information that Kate gave was false information. When she first came on campus, she sent an email to me and the other directors at the after school program and wanted to meet with us to see how we can separate our time on the yard where her children had the yard first and we had it second. I did not respond to the email. I told her I found it very inappropriate. Baldwin has run the after school program. My kids go out when they chose to. We don't need to separate the yard. If it's about community, separating the yard is not community. And false information about finding another location, transportation for the families, they have a bus that brings their children to school. Thank you. It's my after school program that I'm on, sorry. The next person on Baldwin Hillside, in the back, all the way in the back. In the back. The back one. No. Hi, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. My name is Tracy Cook, and I am with, uh, not with, I'm a member of Parent Supporting Teachers, a group of 20,000 uh, parents that uh, originated during the UTLA strike. I'm offering you guys a map because this map cannot be found anywhere. I did it by hand. This will show you all the charter schools in this area. So everybody can see those red dots are charter schools. Those yellow lines are co-locations. This area is saturated. Right. We have um, three schools that are already being co-located. Arlington Heights, Baldwin Hills, Hillcrest. There are 275 charters in LA. What you should know is that there's 1,300 in the state of California about 299 of them failed in, in about two years. None of that money will ever come back to public education. I'm asking you guys to be brave. There are forces so large that will be pushing on you to let this go. We all know where the money is coming from. It's in every, I'm sorry to say, it's in almost every politician in Los Angeles. So anyway, I'm asking you to be brave and do the right thing. Good evening and thank you for having me. Uh, I have a third grader that's uh, at Baldwin Hills and one of the reasons we went to Baldwin Hills is because of the program and the studies that my child would get. And you know, with all due respect, Kate, you're saying that, oh, we didn't intend to take your classes, but they did. And it's impacting my son. My son doesn't have a computer room, he doesn't have art, he does not have an after school program. The after school program that he went to, he got to study for the old set for second grade. They gave him prep for that, the standardized test. They would have given him prep for the third grade uh, test he's about to take. He's missing all that stuff. And so, you know, with all due respect, they're saying, Oh, we're sorry that we didn't intend to impact, but they absolutely and positively did. And I see the impact that it's having on my son. And secondly, with regard to security, you know, we all heard the news reports about what's happening on school campuses. That back gate is not secure. I volunteer at that school every morning during a, a morning ballet. And when I go out that back gate, I see it buzz and folks coming in that back gate. That is not true. And I've taken it to our council. I've spoken to our principal about it because I'm concerned about my child's safety. So I implore you as a board to please vote for this resolution for my child and for the other children that are involved in this. I mean, it's very, very, very important to me. She had a, she tested out with zero, and by March she tested in the first grade. She had excellent instruction at that school. I'd like her to stay there, but she can't because she didn't get into the magnet program. And that's what I have to say. 
you're losing a really good intelligent student of our community because she can't go to a school where there is excellent teaching and we will find somewhere for her to go. Thank you. Um, yes. My name is Java and I'm an occupational therapist. I'm here to speak for the children that no one speaks for. For the children that people push to the back rooms. To the children that are forgotten and not served by this situation. I work in a storage closet. In, ninth, in this year, 2019, I am working with special ed students in hallways, on lunch benches, on the playground, and in storage closets. I work in a room with bars on the window and only one exit. These are the students that are impacted. Yes, the special classes, the yoga, the music, all these classes are being impacted, but the students that are most vulnerable are being neglected and underserved. They are being provided services in a way that is dehumanizing to them. It is unreasonable, it is unjust, it is unequitable. If anyone is uh, driving the Toyota 7HMM655, they may be blocking something that needs to be removed. The Toyota. Yeah. The Toyota? Okay, all right, so we've had five on this side, and now we're gonna have five on this side. It was one May one. I please do 30 seconds? You five, five. Please do if, if I give you all 30 seconds, I can give you all 30 seconds. That's fine. Okay. 30 seconds. I'll, I'll be brief. I just want to debunk three things that were shared. One, the first year when they came and they said they were gracious enough to look at the Delta Center. That wasn't them. I said that they would be least impactful on our campus. That's one. Two, they're saying that they are part of the community. They were founded at its inception to have a school to feed into their middle school, which is north of the 10 on Burnside, which is why they bus students into our school. Three, since their inception, they have not wanted to be on our campus. They have advocated heavily to be at La Cienega. So this is not their love for Baldwin Hills. This is, this is where they were placed and they're trying to make it work, but they don't care about the community. This isn't what they're about. Within the community, 
Um, my child has been attending New LA since kindergarten. She's in first grade now. And I feel like New LA kids are part of the community because I came from the community and my child is part of the community. Um, I'm very pleased with the academic structure and security of the school. I frequently volunteer at the school and notice how important security is to the, to the staff. When we first started school, we were given a keychain and we must show the keychain before entering the gate. And there's always a staff member mm -hmm. in the front. When you volunteer, you must be buzzed in. And when you're buzzed in, you must go to the office, sign in, and get your volunteer badge. When you're done, you must turn in your volunteer badge and sign out. There's a law of who comes in and who comes out. Okay. Thank you. And it has come to our attention, there has been rumors being spread about our schools. I am here as a member of the community and as a parent to inform everyone about what we stand for. New LA Charter mission is to develop a diverse community. Students are passionate about learning, engage in the community, and have respect for themselves and others. We stand to cultivate future civic leaders through rigorous project-based learnings and hands-on commitment to social justice. The school nurtures and trains students to understand how to work together to solve problems, changing their own lives as they change the community around them. We are all here to provide what's best for our kids. We should be able to put our differences aside and coexist together. And we need to we need to understand that this is not a permanent solution, but we need to help one another and be kind to one another. So please, let's respect each other and help each other. That's what we're here for. We're all from the same neighborhood. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maria Casas, and I've been a parent at New LA Charter Elementary School for the past three years now. I have two sons who went from being in a district school to transitioning into a charter school. I personally grew up attending district schools, and so did my siblings. At one point, I had my sons attending the same elementary school I once attended. While my sons were attending a district school, I realized they both needed different learning environments. I personally have nothing against district schools, but I saw that my kids were in need of something different. I saw that um, I saw that there were uh, there were other options out there within our community that were being made available to us, and I was grateful that I had that choice, the choice that is most suitable for our individual situations. Every family is unique, and every family has different needs. I believe that every family has a right to choose the type of school they want uh, to send their children to. Co-locating New LA Charter Elementary School with Baldwin Hills Elementary School should not be an issue. My son who attends New LA has some very good friends who attend Baldwin Hills Elementary and the relationship hasn't changed just because they're at different schools. Co-locating schools can have a positive impact on our children. I believe we should use this opportunity to help our children grow and learn in this diverse community of schools. If both schools collaborate well, we can accomplish so much. We can teach our children that even if we have different ideas and opinions, we can still work together and we can share our hands. Concern for our security for our kids as well. Absolutely. All right. So don't think that's that's back and forth. Yeah. All the comments on the side, please. I don't. I don't share speech. I don't really come. I'm just saying. I'm just sir, saying. Sir, hold, hold, hold. Excuse me, everyone, please. 
I don't want to have to recess this meeting, and I really don't want to have to table this. But it will be. It can be tabled. So please, I need to respect. Thirty seconds. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're going to have a neutral statement by someone who represents LAUSD. Yes. Just very great. Mr. Staggs, and then we will go into a little more discussion, and then I have a, a, a question. So, so good evening, Brunel Skaggs, uh, Charter School Operations Coordinator for Local Edition West and also Northwest, and then I also have my colleague Oswaldo Bonilla, who's also uh, my counterpart in the other areas. So, very quickly, three items. The first thing is, contrary to the belief of why we're here, we're not here to uh, this way, the Baldwin Hills community from taking this action forward. That's not what we're here for. I, formerly serving on this board at one time and also an active uh, member of the community, understand the importance of you guys going through your civic engagement because, again, as we've stated many times before, Prop 39 is imperfect, and in order to resolve some of those issues that come about operationally, you need to have this kind of advocacy and go uh, before the powers that make those decisions. However, having said that, I do want to clear up one, number one, the charter school does not come to the district and request number of classrooms. That's not how that works. The district takes uh, their ADA projections into consideration, looking at uh, their ADA projections. We determine exactly the number of classrooms potentially that a charter would have on any given campus. Number two, with respect to the fact that the charter school hasn't looked for other spaces, uh, that's also incorrect. Uh, we want to uh, point out is that, again, the charter school, based upon the way that Prop 39 works, is that if the charter school is capped, for instance, if, if there isn't enough space at a school, the district triggers what is called a multi-site finding. Uh, in this case, the charter school had additional space that they, that they could have been allocated. However, the charter school chose to stay status quo. They're not in a Prop 39 agreement. They're in what we call an alternative agreement, whereby they decided to forego the space, additional space on that campus because of the impact. Now, I will say this on number three, and most importantly, there was a consideration in terms of you guys working together. We know that this is imperfect. It doesn't really work. We are aware that New LA look for a different area. However, the law dictates that the district, in order to meet its legal compliance, has to provide a space within a seven mile radius. You should, that's, that's, the, that's the law on that. So this is where we were able to cite the school. However, if there are other options available, what I would implore you guys to do if the invitation is extended and is open, I think those discussions are worth having. We can help facilitate those discussions and taking those discussions to the powers that be in terms of this is what the community and the charter school has mutually agreed on if there's other space available. And uh, fourth, to the gentleman's point, who's the teacher, with respect to any operational considerations, for instance, you mentioned at the back gate, uh, there's uh, at times the back gate is left open. Part of my role in terms of post occupancy is going out to charter schools going out to co-located sites and working on those issues collectively with those folks. If you guys want the district's representation, email me and ask me to be at those meetings. Uh, and then finally, with respect to uh, the numbers that were cited, there, there are 72 co-located charter schools district-wide. There are only about 30 charter schools within this area. And then lastly, there are only the, the, the footprint for charter schools is about 16% of the district. Okay, so I just want to make that clear. We have about 200 plus schools in this area. Charter schools, district-wide, that are co-located, 72. So I just want to make that point and then you can ask a question. Okay. But I think you guys should work together and I hope facilitate that conversation if need be to take it to the front end. Okay, I, I have one question. Why are we under the gun to vote on this tonight? Just a very simple answer. Which two do you want to answer? Any, any, both of you all. Okay. Why do we have to fight? Because final decisions, they, they're telling you now that final decisions have been made uh, and that it's over and done with. 
May 1st is the, is the district-wide deadline to make the decisions final. After that, yes, alternative agreements can happen up until the first day of next year. But we're out of here. There's no ability to meet again, huddle up, have a discussion with you all, okay. engage. It's now or never for us based on the deadline. So when they tell you just give them the cool off tonight and it'll come back later, there is no later. That's what they told us. Okay. That's what they told us three years ago, two years ago, and last year. Okay. Um, the neighborhood council does have an ability, the ability to call a meeting, a special meeting, and look at this. And I don't know, I don't know how board members feel, but we've heard from the, you all in the audience, and now we would like to hear something from the, uh, the board as soon as she's speaking. Sure, I don't, I don't have any. I don't think this resolution should come before the neighborhood council at all. I did see something in the resolution that was about um, the neighborhood council having the authority to do investigations about potential sites. Um, and so I'm curious about if that's something that the neighborhood council can assist the two schools with or Prop 39. Um, I don't know about that. So if that's something that's a possibility, then I would like to hear about the options. We are open to options, but we do need to continue to operate our school. We think we're doing a good job, um, and we are doing it with the utmost care to try and work together and not cause conflicts. Um, and it's feeling very frustrating to be attacked on this level when you know we're trying to do our good, our good job for our good students. Okay, all right. How, how many board members have questions? I can hear you. 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 I can take additional rooms unless that was agreed on by both parties. So how did this come to us to make the decision? Okay. Come on, you had your Okay, so I, I would just say briefly, Very short. Yeah. briefly, me looking at it and understanding is that the community is looking at, at, at bringing this to you guys because this is one avenue of advocacy to get their voices heard. So. In the process, in, you know, in that democratic process, this is what happened to get the voices heard. Again, the charter school division, we have no say either way in terms of the advocacy, but what we want to do is provide clarity in terms of the actual process, but I think this is, that would be the reason. Yeah, but which one of you work for the Board of Education? I, I don't know, I no longer work for the Board of Education. I work for LAU and the charter school division. Okay. Yeah, but can, I, can, I, can I answer that question more directly? Yeah. These decisions have to do with two people, LAUSD and the charter school. I know that. We have no to say. We just get a notice one day. That's why we're coming to our neighborhood council to jump in and say, this is not right. We want a letter of support. The law may be what it may be someday, just like anything that comes before you all as a council, but right is right and wrong is wrong. And neighbor, you all are in a position to understand that. LAUSD, along with the charter school, cannot make an agreement to take away space from a school that's been I, I in your that. neighborhood. That's why so I'm just, okay, well, understand. Okay. That. So, another board member? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to uh, say that uh, we should go forward with the vote tonight because time is present. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. I, I'm getting discussion, but I don't really hear it, and that's, we can't have that. Okay, I move that we, uh, Adam on the same time. Yeah, but we have never finished talking yet. You can make a motion. I'm going to make that we vote on the resolution tonight. Is that even an answer? No. 
Yeah. If I could please have everyone's attention, there was a motion made. If no one seconds it, I second. I second. I second. The board is okay. Now we can have more discussion. Now. New LA. Uh, is priority given to people in the community as far as enrollment? Uh, enrollment is. It's a lottery, right? Lottery. Is priority given to anyone in the community as far as. Mm -hmm. No. It's right. a lottery, but if you were to look at the families who are attending, you would see that they're primarily in the 9016 and 9018 and 0018. Okay. Um, is it private or public? Because I'm getting. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you. His question was, is it private or public? We are a public school. We do not have any corporate funding. We do not have any private investors. Our funding comes from our ADA, which is our average daily attendance numbers. The funding comes from the state of California, um, public school education funding. And we are beholden to all the standards and expectations for public schools such as standardized testing, meeting all the criteria for credentialing, um, everything. We're a public school. Okay. Sorry, one more for Baldwin Hills. I know it's a very high performing school. What's the school rating? Okay. The greater school rating? Okay. Um, we are top four, top three or four academic performing school in local district one, which is an extremely competitive district in terms of, if you're talking about the easiest factor, SPAC test scores, English and math, we're number four. And I might add, the data came out just last year, school-wide, charter included, and I believe New LA finished somewhere near the bottom 10% of the entire district. But they certainly, but they certainly didn't have the numbers that we had at Baldwin Hills. Just to answer your question. So, New Los Angeles Charter Elementary School is currently a K through three. We started K one, added second, added third. The standardized tests are only given to third graders. So we do not have uh, test results for third graders yet because they will be taking those tests in May. We will have that data later. If you look at the California dashboard where data shows up, I recently noticed that data is there. It shows yellow, and I asked why that happens, and it's because if a school doesn't have third grade yet, and this is based on last year, that that data is the district average, which is put in there, our surrounding district, which is LAUSD. So there is not, there is not data to compare. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say I am a parent, but no, no kids at school. All of my kids went to LAUSD, for example, giving it an idea of how I feel. One of the things here, here tonight, I just wish I would have brought the book with me. There's a book out called Black Zero Index. It's uh, published by Dr. Michael Beatty, where he uh, went out and selected various schools with uh, math and how uh, blacks are faring in these various schools. Fortunately enough, Baldwin Hills Elementary School is one of those who are performing according to the data that he have published. So uh, my feeling, I have a real hard attitude against LAUSD in many respects because I think they're failing in, in teaching our kids, but just so happened the Baldwin Elementary School is one of the few real performers in terms of uh, having the uh, black kids have good high scores. I realize the district with Prop 39 states that if you uh, don't have enough students and then they're allowed to put charter schools into uh, those areas. That's one of the fallacies at Baldwin Hills that just don't have enough students. I think it's about 300 there or something to that effect. And then you have a lot of room. I think the school is capable of handling 900 to uh, 
or 1200, is that, is that correct? Or somewhere in that area. So I, I realize what, what what all that's involved, but I would hate to see a performance school completely uh, kicked out of, out of the district. And all of here is now, according to the Black Zero Index, are producing good students in, in that respect. So that those of you who know me, you know how I feel about schools. I I volunteer every Saturday. I teach science to uh, kids from 12 to I'm gonna say from second through 12th grade. So okay, um, I, I will make uh, a comment. I'm gonna call for the vote in a moment uh, because we have a motion on the table. It's been seconded. So I'm going to call for the vote, but I just want to be clear about something. No matter what we do up here, what we vote for, LAUSD is going to do what they want to do. And that's the same with any issues that come before the city. And a lot of this, um, if you want to put blame somewhere, put it on LAUSD and the whole thing about charter schools. Okay. Unless I would take one more comment from each side, and then I'm going to call for the vote. I just want to make one comment, if I may, Mr. President. Go ahead. I'm not for it. I'm not against it. I would say that from what I'm hearing, there's a lot of tension on both sides. Perhaps it might be better to work on some kind of a compromise. Apparently, one side has a lens that is harmful, the other side has a lens that is beneficial. LAUSD is kind of in the middle of saying, hey, there's a law that was enacted back in 2000 that said that charter co-locations will occur. But apparently what's going on at the district isn't filtering down enough to what's going on at the local level, if I'm understanding that correctly. So, so I'm, what I'm see, seeing and hearing is that what's going on at, at your office what you're allowed to do under the law, somehow, some way, it's filtering down what's going on at their level. Yeah. If that's an accurate observation. And then on the other side, I'm hearing something totally different. So, I, so if it was up to me, what I'm on the resolution, I, I could do that. But apparently, in the immediate, the long run, was there any way to sit down and hatch out these issues? No. Uh, no. Board no. no. uh, no. President, I think, in terms of that conversation, I think for the Again, LAUSD, our, our concern is that some of the information from both ends in terms of how bad LAUSD is performing, that's not accurate. And then in terms of the process from the other end, that's not accurate. What we implore you guys to do is to at least read through the FAQs. I, guess. Many, of the I, guess. I know you do, many of the board members in order to make an informed decision. Again, we at the district, this is the right of the community in terms of their civic and their democratic process to go before bodies. However, I understand understanding that your vote will be advisory to the Board of Education member who's here. This is why the community is here. So you advise the Board of Education member. However, we want to just ensure that you have a thorough understanding of actually how Prop 39 works prior to making the decision because some things are not actually accurate from our perspective. But uh, I, I, I debate on data, yes. on data that is published. No, but I'm yeah. not debating. It's, it's there in bold view. Yeah. It's not speaking bold. directly to the view in terms of that. We're talking in general. Good evening. I have to stand up. On, uh, this one, I'm going to parent. I, I grew up in Los Angeles, I mean, West Adams. I went to St. Agatha High School. My mom is 96 years old. She lives in the community. I still live in the community. Um, I used to ride my bike through Baldwin Hills um, Elementary School, and I congratulate Baldwin Hills for the accomplishments that you have made you. in this time. But I'm saddened tonight to see our black and brown brothers and sisters arguing, name calling, and at it at each other when it comes to our children. I'm a parent. I have a 16 year old and I have a 21 year old and my daughter went to New Los Angeles Charter. We've been all over LA too. And I came back home to live with my mom and we needed a middle school. And there was no other middle school so we had to walk to New LA Charter for the first time in our community. 
and be a part of our community since I walked when I was in St. Agatha walking up and down Adams Boulevard. So just the one thing I ask is if we could just somehow, because this is not a permanent location, and shame on Proposition 39 for pity these two very good schools at each other. So I'm asking if we can please table the situation so that we can figure out how we can work together and get the space that is needed on both sides. And I'm just basically just from a standpoint of LAUSD, you've got to do better. This is a systemic problem and it needs to stop. situation that I'm hearing is Bowling Hills Elementary is a school that provides education to the students in this area. LA Charter, LA New, New LA provides education to the children in this area. There is a problem in that the two schools cannot peacefully coexist in the same area. Listen to our president, we can sit on it and pass it on and hope that it somehow gets resolved. But that's why we're the neighborhood council because we are here for you to come to us when you find that all other avenues have not been successful in resolving this situation and evidently they have not. My, looking at this whole situation, it rests with LA Unified, and if the pressure is not put on LA Unified to do something, to do what they should do, can do, need to do, then this condition will continue, and the victims, the ones who suffer, are our children. Our children. So LA Unified is supposed to be doing a good job in ensuring that our children are able to get a qualified education in a safe and peaceful environment. And evidently this is not happening. So I think we need to put pressure as the neighborhood council yes. on LA Unified. Yes. And they can talk to us and we can talk to them to let them know what we believe they should be doing for the children in our community. Well, I, I did say that um, two people, and I don't want to go back on that, if two people want to speak for 30 seconds and say something on each side, yes. Okay, so what I'm hearing is the two sides of two different schools, but my question is, we have a very high performing elementary school with kids that are doing great, outstanding things from what I'm number four in the West, the local West, high test scores, kids getting into upper echelon middle schools, we're talking laces, palms, boroughs, all of these great schools, and then you impact them with a new school that comes in and is diminishing some of the things that they were doing and they were known for. That's what I see. And that's what it is. That's what it is. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Now, there's nothing against charter schools, so they have a right to be there because there's space. But if you're taking away space from high performing children, you have to question that. That's what I'm saying.
But the only thing that we need in order to bring this program is a space, a room that we can bring this program. So in order to grow, we need the room, we need the space. And if we don't have the space, then we can't grow. So I, I think space is obviously the issue. We also are operating a highly successful program. We are also serving special education students. We are also, does this count in my 30 seconds? We are, we are also providing a variety of occupational therapy needs. We are providing um, music and computers and art and uh, mindfulness and PE and health. And we are impacted with small space too. So once again, we are not in any effort trying to take over Baldwin Hills. We would like to operate in the space that we need and we implore you for your help if you can help find us the space that works for us in our neighborhood. It was requested by a board member to table this item and um, unless, unless the person that made made the motion agrees to pull that motion uh we have to go on with the vote going to pull okay so um um he, he doesn't want to pull his motion so uh, i'm going to call for the vote How it's going to be worked. Okay, my understanding, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Would you read? is that uh, the motion is made that Wink prepares a, a resolution, letter in support of Baldwin Hills Elementary School, declaring Baldwin Hills Elementary School a charter school free zone. Am I correct in that? Yes. All right. And we do already have that resolution. <laughs> right. All right. So, so that's the motion. Vote. All right. Stephen? Uh, yes. Johnson? Yes. Connie? Yes. Mrs. Jess? Yes. Richard? Yes. Mr. Preston? Wake up. Come back. Let me see first. Mr. Simmons? Yes. Okay, uh, Eva? Yes. Adam? No. Uh, Mr. President? Yes. Yolanda? No. Okay, um, it's a tough one for me, but I'm going to have to say um, no with all due respect. No. What's the final count? What's, What's the final count? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Um, it was at page three. Page three. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, just because we are supporting this resolution does not mean that the uh, LEUSD will look at it and, and take our advice. So please remember that. I appreciate everyone for coming. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, and uh, please continue to come, and especially when you're bringing your children. Yeah, we're done. Before you move on, I have a quick question. Just for my own clarity. Just for my own clarity, and Clint knows how I am in terms of being on the board. Just for my own clarity. If the board, and I understand the symbolic nature of the vote here, we're not hindering the democratic process. But if it, given the nature of the vote in terms of what you guys are voting for, I guess I'm unclear as to if you don't understand the inner workings of how Prop 39 works, how does that? I understand. No, I know, Claire, we've been on the board for a long time, so together. Yeah, so I'm just asking, how does that, how does that work? I just wanted that just to be ready. Okay. All right. Uh, if I could have everyone's attention, um, we are so sorry that this has gone on from the time it has. 
I will say that it would have been much better to have this as a standalone item at a special meeting, and then it could have had all the time to vote for it. Now we're going to have a hate thing from California 